Hello lovely viewers, my name is Cori. Welcome to my channel. This is different from my other art videos because you have an intro from me. All the other ones just start right into the time lapse tutorial, but this one is different uh, and I believe it warranted an introduction. So I had been working on a painting for about two weeks, including the sketch and getting to those final touches and had about seven hours total of footage that I had completely edited. The video was all done. I just needed to export it and was having a lot of troubles. I tried about 15 times to export it and it was never successful. So I took some steps to try and see if I could fix it. And unfortunately and very sadly, some of the actions I took wound up completely erasing all the footage I had for the video as well as the project. And it also deleted all the other footage that I had associated with that video editing program. So it was a total bummer and I'm really sad that you won't be able to get to see the time lapse of this painting um, because all that footage just disappeared and it was unrecoverable. So lesson learned, uh, you know, feel hard, feel fast and, and then move on and learn from it. So definitely learned my lesson of what not to do <laughs> so I don't lose footage and many hours of work. But I did at least want to show you the painting and I'll go over some techniques and tools that I used. So this is the painting. It is an 8 by 10 uh, painting of a blue macaw. And that's probably why it took so long. There were many, many details to fill in and I just want to get as accurate as possible. So uh, I'm going to talk about the paper I used. So it is hot pressed paper, 140 pound, instead of cold pressed paper. I typically use cold pressed paper because it can be at a higher weight, 300 pound. I've never seen hot pressed paper go above 140 pound, which is what this is. However, it has a very smooth surface compared to cold pressed paper. Cold pressed paper has a very textured sort of toothed surface and that can be great as far as preventing warping in the paper but i really have found that with the hoppers paper i like that smooth finish it just makes everything blend so nicely so i'll probably be working more with that in the future for paints i'm going to talk about the colors i use for the blue feathers i use a combination of ultramarine blue, manganese blue, cobalt blue, and then I also added a little bit of viridian hue in there for an emerald undertone. The yellow feathers, I primarily used cadmium yellow medium for the sort of shadows and just light streaks in the feathers. I added just tiny, tiny bit of cadmium red light. And then uh, for some of those slightly darker shadows, I used a combination of cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, and then even just like the faintest hint of black, but you don't want the shadows in the light area to go too dark because then it doesn't look quite as realistic. So that blended nicely. I also added cadmium yellow medium prime on the head before adding the green over the top uh, because there was that yellow hue shining through. And the green was made with sap green, a little bit of cadmium yellow medium, some yellow ochre, and then for the darkest parts right here, some black. And I think I added even a little bit of ultramarine blue over on these edges so it would blend into the blue feathers. The beak is of, and the black feathers are of course black, but there's also some Payne's Gray in there uh, to just add a little bit of rich dimension. It's very, very dark blue, wonderful for shadows and the darkest parts of the painting. And that is primarily it. I did use a different tool than I have used in any of my other videos, so I'm excited to be able to demo that for you. It worked very nicely on here for the scratches and imperfections in the beak, which just added that sort of level of detail and reality uh, to compare to the original. And I will link the reference image that I used in the description. It's from Unsplash, and many thanks to the photographer who took this wonderful photo because it made it a joy to paint so um but there i will kind of get as close as i can you can see in the beak some of those scratches and i used one of those really old-fashioned pen and nibs just it had a, has a very pointy uh 
tip for the kind of pet nib and that just very lightly scraped away the top layers paint for the paper to show underneath and I think that worked so well because it's hot press paper and very smooth surface. I'm going to be demoing on cold press paper because that's what my watercolor pad is so uh, it might be a little not quite successful because it has a texture to the paper but we will find out and I'll at least be able to show you what that looks like. So thanks for bearing with me for this one and I'm going to get into demoing. So I'm starting out with showing you a little bit of how I approach the blue feathers, the main body of the bird. I had laid down just a light layer of the blue I had mixed up and luckily I do have a couple of progress photos from the painting so I have so you can see a little bit of how the painting progressed but I laid down the layer of blue very lightly, let it dry and then started going over with the texture. So I have the, some of those smaller feathers that are at the shoulder that we're just kind of using the tip of the brush to get the streaks and lines of the feathers. And then for those longer feathers, they were either had the light in the middle, so I would paint the dark around it and maintain the white line in the middle, or they had the dark line in the middle, and so I would use Payne's Gray to draw to paint that dark line. And having to go over with several layers the the first layer i laid down that was really light was that it was very light and so i started that way so that if i had to go darker it was much easier to do that but if i needed those lightest lights i wouldn't have to worry about trying to get them back later so that's a bit about how i did the blue feathers now i'm just gonna paint a general shape of a beak <laughs> i'm using black and Payne's gray and did it very very quickly for this not paying nearly as much attention to detail as i did on the original but this is just for demonstration's sake Okay, let it completely dry and then there's that pen and nib I was talking about where you can use the tip to just scrape paint off the surface to get that sort of scratchy look and this actually worked quite nicely on the cold press paper I was happy about that so uh, I think that this tool does work at least for me better than an exacto knife for scraping layers of watercolor off and there you see it and then finally, one of the other things I used was a permanent white ink, so it's uh, waterproof. And I didn't use it on the beak really in the final painting, but there were a couple spots on the eyes that I just needed highlights. So I did that and a couple of spots on the white skin of the bird's chin. So there's the first progress photo. That is from May 21st. This one's from May 22nd. There you can see that very light layer of blue that I had laid down. And then I happily did have a tiny bit of footage left about the last 15 and a half minutes of the painting that was still on my phone. And so that is here for you to be able to see. There you see I'm using the pen and nib to add a little bit of white uh, to that skin area, get those highlights back that might have been covered. I did use the pen to create the signature, this time rather than my paintbrush. It has a nice fine tip. And then even after adding the signature, I found a few more details that I wanted to fill in later that day after finishing the painting. And then even one final thing on the last day, May 25th that I realized some of the feathers that meet the shoulder, I had, I had forgotten to fill in some of the dark shadows. So you will see that coming up in a moment here. There you see, I'd even taken the tape off the edges and just wanted to get that final touch
Here's a final result as you saw earlier, a little up close. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one even though it wasn't a full time lapse. I promise I will have more time lapse ones in the future. See you in the next one.